Hi, I'm Donna Wilder. And I'm Janie Donaldson. Welcome to Quilt Central. Today we're featuring dueling quilters, wearable art and accessories, and machine basting for hand quilting. I'm sure you're going to enjoy today's show. Quilt Central is made possible in part by Janome America, makers of sewing machines and sergers. Janome, because you simply love to sew. APQS offers the Millennium and a full line of hand-guided quilting machines made in America's heartland for America's artisans. Sylvia Design Sewing Furniture, designed just for you. JT Trading Corporation, stick with us. Electric Quilt Company. Paducah McCracken County Convention and Visitors Bureau. Additional funding was provided by these companies that care about quilting. Welcome to Quilt Central, celebrating quilting in everyday living with your hosts, Jane Donaldson and Donna Wilder. Joining us today is Sue Motes, who is a celebrity long arm teacher and also a sulky educator. Welcome, Sue. Thank you, Janie. It's so nice to be here today and be back in Paducah again. Sue has done many, many beginner classes, and they always are the fullest class because we are starting so many long arm quilters out. And she has some tips for beginners. So can you tell us what you have here a little bit? Uh, what we have here is a uh, creative cloth or convenience cloth. It's actually a vest that looks like a pieced and appliqued uh, quilt and vest. And um, it makes it easier for the long arm quilter to practice some of the techniques that she needs to do without having to actually do the construction first. We need to save our time to actually do our practice and be able to uh, work on the garments. Uh, you also need to learn how to work with the different rulers and uh, other gadgets that you have to do. So this is a good way to practice these, learning how to do straight lines and stitch in the ditch and that type of thing. Well, they tell me you were an elementary school teacher before you were a quilter and you you are still promoting the same logo, practice, really practice, 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 practice. Yes. <laughs> uh, taught elementary, middle school, and uh, high school, so it's nice to be teaching something else where the students are more willing. <laughs> so uh, do you want to um, tell us how you start your beginners out or what advice you have for our beginners? Uh, with beginners, uh, you have to practice your pantographs first, so that would be uh, uh, what you would work on. Then when you have uh, mastered working with pantographs, then you may want to start on custom design work and learning how to do stitch in the bit ditch and then perhaps with uh, some applique, learning how to go around those. Pick out the designs and do some meandering and, and decide what you want to do in each of the sections. So this gives you a nice piece to practice on and when you wear it out to Guild or shopping or wherever you go, people say, oh, where did you get that wonderful? And you're advertising your business, you can say, here's, you know, this is my business and here's my card. I think that's a good idea to practice on pre-printed um, fabric yes. because you don't have all that um, time in there mm -hmm. while you're practicing. You also have some garments. Yes. You want to tell us about those? Um, yes, because they kind of progress through a, uh, different stages of your practice method. Well, the very first garment I did uh, was practicing uh, the pantographs and um, it's a blue um, outfit that I dyed. I throw things in the washing machine and dye the fabric and um, then I practiced with a pantograph and I decided I wanted to add some more to it so I went back and echoed around the pantograph and uh, added to it. The second garment that I did was practicing uh, free motion work and I had a uh, fabric that had some animals and trees and uh, different f uh, floral designs on it and that was facing up on the top of the machine and I had denim underneath and I uh, just quilted around that design and, and practiced with it. Then as I began trying uh, different weights of thread such as the, the jeans weights of thread, um, I did another pantograph that was more difficult with that one. Um, I also went into working with um, rayon threads, 
metallic threads, uh, different things like that. So that and was a lot of fun. The difficulty so, a little at a time. So each each thing that the, the new quilter wants to try, they need to make samples up and see how the threads and, and the techniques work and make a sample on something you like and then you can wear it at well, the you, same time. You definitely have broken it down into a nice progression, I think. Do you want to show them a little bit about how the ruler works? Yes. Uh, so on this design it had some uh, four patches and I used the ruler to uh, stitch along and uh, I already have that section done but I can demonstrate. You want your uh, you can uh, run Just run the better. foot right along yeah. the guide, and that teaches a little bit of straight stitching. And then you would have to switch it around and keep going down this direction. Okay, well, that's a good idea. Um, and then I took some chalk marks and drew that in and could do the second spot. Then on the second piece, uh, I did just, just some applique on outline. the right. Yes. We also have... Um, some other things that you have brought to us, and I kind of wanted to see what some of All these right. were like. Um, in your progression of teaching beginner work, you get into, get into the fancy threads yes. and all the trick things that can be done. And you can see that's beautiful, and your pieces are reversible. So I always like to have um, you know high, high contrast. I could wear like this during the daytime or the evening, and this would be more casual. I could wear that to the grocery store or to work. For beautiful garments. A lot of fun. And then um, this one you can run if you're having trouble with your uh, specialty threads. You can actually put the specialty thread through the needle, you know, through the tension and through the needle with a second thread. You can put a rayon, a cotton, and you give it strength. And this one? This one has a uh, cotton thread. It was used in my uh, bobbin. I used a 12 weight cotton. I was looking at the floral side when I was oh, doing the quilting. quilting. around this pattern. Around this side. Comes out on this side. And, and I kept salad. changing my bobbin colors to uh, oh, get them to look beautiful. different. Beautiful. And this one is actually a not pieced. It's a ready-made garment. But it's a ready-made garment. Then I stretched it onto my rollers and uh, was able to do it. You get it out flat uh, the yeah. best you can. The best you can. And then outline it, it the design. Just outline the design. And it actually looks like patchwork. Well, thank you so much for showing us these tips for the beginners, and I hope to see you at the Quilt Central Retreat. I hope so. What do you think of when you hear the term dueling quilters? We're talking about the nonviolent kind of dueling, and that is with the sewing machines. Joining me, we have Valerie Cook and John Foster, who are going to be our dueling quilters today. Welcome, Valerie. Hi, Donna. It's great to be here today. And John? Thank you. I'm glad to be here today with you. Super. How did you two get started doing this quilting together? Well, we both are sewers and have been for a long time, and I tried to talk John into making a quilt, and um, which he did, and uh -huh. this is his third one that he has designed himself. Great. And John, how has this experience been? Well, it's been fantastic. I got into it, and I didn't really think I would enjoy, but after I got involved with it, it's took over and I really enjoy doing it. Oh, that's yeah. great. Now you're all going to be very jealous when you see this quilt that John has made. Let's take a look at it and tell me a little bit about it, John. It's uh, Thunderbird, which is an Indian design that I've always admired. The uh, Thunderbird, there's different ones, but I just I drew the one that I wanted and that's the one that I came up with and I put it together and it came out fine. I love the colors. Now, did you do all of that selection? or? Well, did Valerie done most of the color coordinating for uh -huh. me in that, and I done the designing of the different pattern in that. It and kind of all worked together. Great. And did he get a good grade on that? Oh, he got an excellent grade, and he's gotten a lot of very positive comments on the wonderful job he did and how impressive the quilt looks. Well, it really is. It's very dramatic. Now, I'm going to let John start quilting here. And Valerie, tell me what you're doing there with that little piece of foam that you have. I just on. have a piece of paper marked with a pencil mark at a quarter inch that I am going to stitch on just part way uh -huh. to show this piece of foam that I use as a guide for the fabric. Oh, it's something clever. that I have been using um, in quilt classes to illustrate where a quarter inch seam is mm -hmm. and that gives you an accurate quarter inch seam throughout the quilt. 
That's nice because sometimes when you're feeding the fabric in, it gets a little askew before it gets to the normal marker on the machine. Well, I'll let you get started. And John, tell me what you're working on there. I'm putting a side panel on the head. Oh, the okay, right now. sure. Let's turn that the other direction okay. so everybody can see. That's the head that we're working on there. That's great. So now you're ready to sew the other side and sew get that going. Sew the other going. side and get it on. Now, how do you spend a lot of time sewing together? Yeah, quite a bit. Uh-huh. And uh, I don't know, a lot of times we'll sit down three or four or five, six hours and go by and we're still there doing it. So. Well, it must do pretty well because if you can do it for five hours or so, that's, uh, that's excellent that you can keep going. Well, we yeah. enjoy each other's company, so it works out real great. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Do you have a studio that you work in where you have machines set up together? Yes, uh -huh. we have machines set up in the studio somewhat in the same fashion as uh -huh. we have here. We sit across from each other, talk, joke, uh -huh. um, and still are very, very productive in what we do. And still very good friends, too, right? Oh, you bet. <laughs> now, you're working on which part of the quilt? Right now, um, I'm working on putting the bottom blue section that is just below oh, the okay. tail feathers okay. of the Thunderbird. Okay. We've assembled most of the bird so that it could be illustrated on just how easy it is to go together. Uh-huh. Now this is done in a strip piecing technique. Is that a bar almost a bargello? A good amount of this is is done in strip piecing. There are some sections throughout the center of the bird that's built across in like two inch increments. Uh-huh. Because they um, cascade down in right. two-inch increments. And um, it's really not a difficult quilt to do because it's, it's mostly straight line sewing. There's just a few half square triangles that are made to achieve the tail feathers in right. the beak. Right, right. <coughs> yep, so. Very good. And John, you've sewn yours and pressed yours now. And what's your next step? I'm gonna put the top border on it. Okay. Top blue border. Great. We're moving along here. I mean, this is fun to see you kind of keeping up with each other. Do you ever get in a battle to see who can quilt the fastest? Or <laughs> I hear a couple of chuckles there. Is that a yes? Well, occasionally we play around a little bit. Uh-huh. Kind of get, get going. I always come up on the tail end, though. I kinda... Oh, I can't believe that, John. Uh, I can't believe that. I'm a little slow. <laughs> no, <times>. I don't <laughs> think so. I bet you put the pedal to the metal of that foot presser there and you just go with yeah, that. Sometimes I do. It works out sometimes, sometimes it doesn't. Great. Now this is, okay, we're, he, now you've done the bottom portion. I have and attached he's the bottom portion okay. and it's set to, to press and then when John completes the head section we'll stitch that on. Okay. We, well, do you want to talk about some of the other parts? Now what certainly. do you have here? Okay. When the side panels that are forming the mm -hmm. border of the quilt are made. They are made quite easily first by cutting across the width of the fabric, mm -hmm. the black and the red. And that way you sew one whole width and then we take and cut, cut them the apart into one and a half inch increments. Okay. Which then become step down. we step down into the quilt. So this is how the piece looks, where you've cut. Exactly. We did the skinny one, then the next one, and then you have the three colors, and then the wider, mm -hmm. and then back to the multicolored section there. And then all of those are cut into strips mm -hmm. that then form, and I'll hold that over here, which will make it easier, and you can just okay. talk about it. This is how the section across the top and the bottom okay. of the quilt is pieced. And Once here's that the skinnier one, mm -hmm. and then here's the little bit wider, all the way into the multicolored one. Exactly. And once the squares or the panels are made, they're just stitched together with a half inch showing uh -huh. uh, a one inch strip of red. That it creates a lovely frame around all of that main part of it. And then you selected kind of a blanket looking fabric there for the sort of border around the center medallion portion. We brought a different fabric to illustrate that 
it doesn't have to be just that one uh -huh. to make the quilt work. Um, this is another, it still has like an Indian oh, design look so. to it, but because it has the right colors in it, you can see that it, it will still accent the quilt very yep. nicely. And this little nine patch in the bottom is at each of the corners that That's you have correct. there. That's great. Well, how's John coming? Almost finished on this one. Well, good. That was pretty speedy. And then what are we going to have one of you sew? Is it ready to sew the parts together or what will be? Well, the next thing um, that will happen, of course, in assembling the quilt is sewing the PC sewed. To the piece you sewed. Now, sewed. who gets to do that? Um, well, we may not even be able to finish it up, but yeah. there's, yeah. Only do you so want to try can... that one? Great. Now, John, this is your third quilt that you've made. Have you designed some more since then? or I've got a couple of them I'm thinking about, but oh, I haven't good. planned any more designs just yet. Uh-huh. And you're sort of doing your finger pressing on that, which uh -huh. I like to do too because it helps you before you actually go and have to press it. Yeah, it kind of gives your seam a way to lay before you mm -hmm. put the iron on it. And, uh, that way a lot of times you don't get a buckled seam. Right, right. Well, let's, I'll tell you what, why don't we lay this out so that we can show everybody how that's going to go together because we probably won't have time. Now, do you have any tips while he's finishing that up about sewing together as a team, particularly when you have a team like the two of you working together? Well, one thing I found from sewing together is that, <laughs> that. because we can talk and, and joke with each other as we're sewing, we end up getting a lot done and it doesn't seem like we the time is gone before we know it oh. and it it's um, a way of being very productive we have a lot of fun making quilts Good. and that's great now how about you John do you find that this is a way to be productive and get a lot of good quality time with each other to me it's relaxing and we joke and clown around and work and we get a lot of work done and I just enjoy the heck out of it. Well, good. Well, I want to thank you both because we've enjoyed having you two today. Thank you to the Dueling Quilters. Well, thank, thank you, Donna, for having, for having us, here. us. Every once in a while, I like to do some hand quilting, and I like to put it in a hoop where I can leave it by my easy chair in the living room and pick it up and sew a little while I'm watching a little television and just do it at my own leisure. But I like to prepare the piece before I put it in the hoop so it's stabilized and the layers won't shift while I'm working away. So I have a little tip for you. This is a frame that I have that I set up and I put any sewing machine head on it. I drop the feed dogs and put on a quilting foot so I can go any direction. And I have learned by trial and error that there is a good way and there is a bad way to baste these together. At first I basted it into channels and when I did that I found I had a lot of hills and valleys and it really didn't work out very well because it pulled up like a piece of elastic. But then I found that I could baste in a grid and I will show you a little bit about basting in that grid because it works wonderful in stabilizing. I go up, over, down, over, up, over, and if your corners don't match perfect, that's fine because this is a basting thread and it's going to come right out. And I move fairly quickly so that the stitches are elongated and they will pick out real easy like regular basting stitches are supposed to be. See how fast and easy that goes? You can have one basted in a very short time. I hope you enjoyed that basting tip. And now we'll join Donna at the Quilt Central Retreat. I have always loved vintage fabrics, and so does my guest. Joining me is Amy Butler. Welcome, Amy. Thank you. Thanks for having me. You have so many neat old fabrics, new fabrics, yeah. uh, trinkets. 
I'm a big collector of all things, uh -huh. but especially vintage fabric and old jewelry and buttons and notions. And I try to create projects where I can utilize all that stash so it gives me an excuse to keep shopping for more. <laughs> Great <laughs> so, idea. What are we going to make today? We're going to make a drawstring purse today. And that's this project here. It's a simple one and a half hour project. It's great for using up scrap material. It's simple piecing. Uh -huh. It's almost like making a quilt square. So it's very fun to do. Good, well let's get started. Okay. How do you begin this? Well, you take your pattern piece and you cut out all your shapes. These are very basic shapes, nice to work with. Uh -huh. Cut them directly out of your paper, pin them on your yardage, and then cut out all your bag pieces. Is it difficult to come up with the color combinations or is it something you just kind of play with or? This kind of happens naturally. Uh -huh. You know, I set all my fabrics around me and I have piled in color palettes basically yes. and I just start putting the patterns together and let them play and and something starts to speak to me and you know, your eye just happens to figure out, well that looks really good and then that's just, that's my final decision. So these are the ones you've selected. Yeah, these are my fabrics and I've used vintage feed sack cloth and some new quilter weight cotton. Mm -hmm. I like to combine both new and old. And I basically cut all my pieces out. I've got two pieces for the lining. This is dress weight mm -hmm. fabric. Two top pieces, middle sections, and bottom sections. We're gonna piece both the front and the back right. covers. And we've got a couple pieces for handles and drawstring. And then I picked two decorative ribbons that we're going to applique on the outside of the bag for interest. Good, well let's take those away right. and we'll begin the project. Okay, it's very simple, it's a lot of fun. Well, everybody likes to do things that are simple because they don't have a lot of time anymore. No, it's, and it's very rewarding and it's nice to sit down and I make these for myself because I'm a fashion vixen and I like different bags. Uh -huh. But Good. I like making them for friends and family and they're great to give gifts in. Yes. They make great containers. So the construction is simple. This first uh, piece shows us piecing together all three sections. Mm -hmm. You attach them together with a half inch seam, press it all open, repeat that for the back. Okay. Okay. Then the next step, we just applique our decorative ribbon. And, and I, I'm can sorry? You place that wherever? You can place them over the seams. And um, I play around with the positioning them depending on the scale of the ribbon I'm mm -hmm. working with and how mm -hmm. it plays with the patterns in the bag. And you attach it by sewing um, just a top stitch along the top and bottom of each of the ribbons. And also on this step, when you're working on the front panel, you need to add your two buttonholes, and they're just centered down about an inch and a quarter from the top raw edge. Good. Then we simply attach our front and back pieces together with mm -hmm. a half inch seam, press everything open again, okay. keep pressing, it keeps the bag tidy. Uh -huh. And then for our lining, you place your two lining sections together, right sides together, sew a half inch seam all the way around and press. It's like making little envelopes there, isn't it? It is, <laughs> just little packages. Then we're going to attach our handles to the lining, but we need to make our handles first. It's a simple process and you end up with a super nice handle. You take your handle piece, mm -hmm. you press the entire piece lengthwise down the center to get a center crease as a right. guideline. Then you just press in both raw edges towards the center, uh -huh. press the entire piece again in half, and then just top stitch down both edges. And you and get that a makes it really sturdy, beautiful which is handle. nice. Yeah, yes, those sturdy. are great. They last really well. Mm -hmm. Then I'm gonna show you inside the lining here. At this stage, you turn the lining right side out. Right. And attach your handles on both top raw edges. You center the handles in the middle of the bag mm -hmm. and you just attach within the half inch seam allowance. Yeah. And then turn your bag wrong side out again of your lining. Then you simply turn your exterior of the bag right side out. Take your lining and you slide it over the outside of the bag. Uh-huh. You sew them together with the half inch seam and you leave three inches open in the back so you can turn the bag out. And, and there you go. <laughs> it looks great. It's now beautiful. you brought some other ideas where you've used your vintage fabrics and they look really fun to see what you're able to do. They're fun. You can dress things up. Here's a great example. This is kind of, has a beautiful green feeling. This would be nice for fall and it's actually mm -hmm. kind of dressy for yes. evening. Yes, yes. And I added some beading and some antique glass buttons on the edge of the tassels just to give it a little sass. Now what are these little balls? Are those just... These, I, I, they're just fabric inspiration. These are antique um, rag balls made with old cotton. Uh -huh. And this is when ladies used to have the time to actually hand crochet rag rugs. And that's what these are, it's oh. solid. That they're is beautiful. heavy, yes. That's and I've been right. collecting these for about 10 years and I have them all different colors. That's They're great. just inspiring and beautiful. Well, I think you're very inspiring. Oh, and I thank love you. what you do. I love thank your you. color sense. And I'm really glad that you could join us. Thank you for having me. I just 
love Amy Butler's little bag. It was great how she used those vintage fabrics for them. Yes, thank you for joining us today. Be sure to join us next time for a lesson in continuous line quilting, stenciling on fabric, and instructions for a friendship scroll wall hanging. See you then. Quilt Around the Clock. Visit the Quilt Central website at www.quiltcentraltv.com for more information on this program. Quilt Central is made possible in part by Janome America, makers of sewing machines and sergers. Janome, because you simply love to sew. APQS offers the Millennium and a full line of hand-guided quilting machines made in America's heartland for America's artisans. Sylvia Design Sewing Furniture, designed just for you. JT Trading Corporation, stick with us. Electric Quilt Company. Paducah McCracken County Convention and Visitors Bureau. Additional funding was provided by these companies that care about quilting. Celebrate quilting in your everyday living. To purchase videotapes of this or any episode of Quilt Central, you may call toll-free at 1-866-PADUCA.